I remember in my day the girls would say, right, I don't do double penetration, I don't do this, and I don't do Ron Jeremy. I'm Charlie Tan, I'm 22 years old, I'm an erotic model, porn performer and artist. I'm Lindsay Drew Honey, I'm 60 years old. I write erotic thrillers but in the past I've been a glamour model, a stripper, a porn producer and editor of Penthouse magazine. So you know when you said you were 19 and you sat up and started doing webcamming, you just got the gear and just in your bedroom? You know, I started flat, out a room in my flat. I had a computer that cost less than 200 pounds and I didn't even have an external camera. This crappy little webcam that pixelated me and you know, it was still like massively profitable. But yeah, almost every porn model I've ever spoken to does webcam as yeah. well. Yeah, I'm sure now. There's a huge like solo market just doing things by yourself. What fans want to see is Quite a sexy time with Charlie. Yeah, <laughs> just like, you know, chilling on the couch on yeah. a Saturday night, you know, having a little play or something. It's a bit more like reality, isn't it? When I was working, you know, you'd see the girls in Playboy and people think, I'm never going to bump into a girl who looks like yeah, that. Yeah, that's down. not a real girl. Because she's airbrushed anyway. Mm -hmm. I've had at least two or three people saying like, wow, you look like my ex-girlfriend. You look like someone they can have a fantasy about mm -hmm. that, you know, they're not really going to get you, but in their dreams they kind of might, do you know yeah, what I mean? exactly. My first shoot was for Penthouse and it was very odd because my first shoot and I was doing a lot of it outside, you know, with like a boob falling out and my stockings oh, yeah. showing and I was supposed to be a secretary or something. And it was quite a nice thing to do. You know, you always kind of remember your first one, don't you? When people started watching porn for free on the internet, that wasn't really such a thing when you were working, right? I mean, now, literally, you know, you get a smartphone and you type in P-O and did you mean porn? So, yeah, I mean, yeah. it literally just pops up really very quickly. And I think there's loads and loads of free porn now. I mean, mm. I suppose that impacts on what you do as well. You've got your fan base, I'm guessing, who want to see everything you're doing, but sometimes they'll just look at anything, really, just to kind of, you know, get off. So I think there's so much choice that it's it's made the porn industry a much sort of scaled down version. I think people really want to see like uh, amateur couples going at it. That combined with the rise of piracy and people stealing content and yeah. uploading it for free for yeah people to watch. The industry is so oversaturated and there's so many models trying to make money and so few gigs, especially in the UK. I remember I went to LA and I interviewed an actress called Sharon Mitchell and she was a really good actress actually. A lot of the American films had quite a lot of acting in it, you know. Yeah. They didn't just go straight it's here, a is, a, is a pizza boy and suck on his sausage kind of thing. It was like yeah. they had big stories. Anyway, she said she went in to see one of her movies and she said there was my pussy like 20 foot wide, you know. There was this guy in the row in front of me and he was like really cute and she said and I was just watching this and I was getting really horny and then I went round and I crawled in front of him and in it I'm given a blowjob on the screen and I started giving this guy a blowjob oh, wow. and he sort of looked down at this and then he looked up at the screen and she said I have <laughs> never I've never <laughs> seen anyone's face and you know she said oh it was God. just like one of the funniest moments in my career kind wow. of thing. Oh, really? What sort of stuff are you doing? I'm doing films that are a bit different such as like a film where I played uh, a street performer. You know, we both played uh, street performers. I was a clown and he was a busker. So, so did you all the gear on? I had, had all my gear on, I had the makeup. That so that was really... Lot of getting off to get into it. Mm. Yeah. My kind of uh, introduction really into porn, I did a couple of porn sets, but basically it was as a porn producer, me and my ex-partner, Ben Dover or Lindsay Honey or whatever, we started the private line in video. Hi, Marie. Hi, Lindsay. I, um, your latest venture was working on the Lover's Guide. How was that? That was, it was very explicit, but very enjoyable. We used to do some, like, really big budget movies. We'd go off abroad and shoot. But I think companies like Private, you know, they were pouring, you know, a lot of money into making a big budget movie. Mm. Um, but I don't think that really happens so much now, does it? You know, I, I'm quite aware that it's really hard to make money by just doing porn videos yeah, for because it's for actually other companies. It's yeah. less money than 20 years ago, I would say. Yeah, I think the standard rates in the industry right now is for a solo shoot, it's anything between 150 and 250 pounds. Wow. For a boy girl scene, anything from 250 and 350. Wow. And for a girl girl, the same 200 to 250 sure. probably. So what are the guys getting? Oh, about half that. It's I the gender pay gap. It's yeah. the only business where the the guys actually get, get half. What the yeah. girls do, and they've got a really tough job. If they can't perform, you know, they have to be sent home. But what, but what was it like 
back when you were working? Top girls would probably get about three grand and the, the boys that were coming were probably going to get 1,500 quid or something. So they would be earning less than the girls, but they would be earning a fair amount of money. There was just more money to be made. So everyone could have the spoils, you know. These days, th there's not enough money to make money out of it, I'm guessing. There's so many porn models in the UK. Quite a nice thing is that um, there's quite a diverse range of people. Like there's so many girls over like a size 14. A lot of those big American companies didn't bother with that. They just mm. like got vivid girls who looked like they were on the cover of Playboy. I would um, say that that's something that hasn't changed so much is that like bigger companies still hire models of a very specific look. Like I was looking at a website of a, an agency. All the models on their page look the same, just with yeah. different hair colors. Yeah, the check. Like, or yeah. teenagers with an yeah, hourglass yeah. figure yeah. and big boobs. How did your career kind of progress from being a penthouse editor to being an erotic novelist? When I stopped working at Penthouse, I then did a few other magazines that I just used to write features for and stuff. So it became what I did for a living. And then, then I kind of went on and started writing scripts for private for porn shoots. Well, basically, Fifty Shades of Grey came out and I just sort of read this and I thought, yeah, I could do that. Why don't I have a go at writing it? So that was called Every Shade of Blue. And then I've, I've done the, the follow up, which is Every Shade of Black. And when you're writing, in erotica for women, you've got to make the men the main kind of focus, yeah, I think. They've got to be charming. Uh, yeah, they've got to be charming, yeah. they've got to be ruthless in the bedroom, but kind with it. In contrast, like a lot of the UK porn that is produced today, the guys are not so charming and attractive because, no, because the, the regular the guys want to relate to them, you know, they, they don't want to watch super attractive yeah, model types. And also, going not at it. necessarily all the super attractive model types can do it to order. Yeah. I think to conclude, one of the reasons that the industry is suffering today is because, yeah, everybody thinks porn is for free and for the most part it is, but if you want higher quality content and if you want porn to continue, you have to directly support producers and models. People would not hesitate to pay, what, seven to 13 pounds for a cinema ticket, but you know, paying seven to 13 pounds for a porn movie, oh no, why would you do that? Porn's free. This mindset is really damaging for models and producers and there's no guarantee of income in this business anymore, no. which is a shame.